While there are many aspects of videography and cinematography that could elevate your videos and make you a better creator, you really only need to know four main things in order to elevate your videos beyond everyone else's basic knowledge of turning on the camera in auto mode. And I'm gonna walk you through those four things in today's video. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Larry. I'm a creator living in Denver, Colorado. And on this channel, I really like to teach people about photography, videography, content creation, gear, and provide a little bit of motivation. Let's get started. Whether you're recording with your phone or you decided to pick up your first camera, there's one main thing that you need to pay attention to, and that is exposure. And exposure is broken down into three main concepts, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Now, ISO basically means light sensitivity. A lower ISO means that your camera is less sensitive to light, while a higher ISO means <clears throat> your camera is more sensitive to light. If you shoot at ISO 100, you're likely to have less grain, less noise than if you shoot at ISO 1600. Now, the thing about modern cameras and even camera phones is that a lot of them have gotten so good over the years to where shooting at ISO 800 or even 1600 is really not that bad. It's when you start moving into the 20,000, 32,000 range where you really start to notice a lot of noise, grain, and the image breaks down. So a good rule of thumb that I tell people is, you know, try to shoot at the lowest ISO possible, but if you need to crank that ISO, you need more light sensitivity, go ahead and bump it up and then compensate with the other two portions of the exposure triangle. Once I have my ISO set, the next number I'm paying attention to is shutter speed. And if you're looking at your camera or your phone and you're trying to figure out which one of the settings these things is, it's the fraction number. So the one over whatever number. Most professional videos, movies included, are shot around 24 frames per second. That is the normal motion blur for human eyes. It's pretty much what we normally see. But a lot of internet videos, especially Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok, a lot of those videos are shot at 30 frames per second, which shows a few more frames per second. It's not as true to life, but it's still close enough to where it doesn't feel overly fake. When you want to shoot something like slow-mo, you can shoot at 60 frames per second or even 120 frames per second. And I'm starting to even see things shot at 240 frames per second. The way that this creates that slow motion effect is if you have a 24 frame per second timeline and you shoot at 60 frames per second, you can slow it down to 40%. If you have a 30 frame per second timeline and you shoot at 60 frames per second, you can slow it down to 50% and so on and so forth. A good rule of thumb whenever you're shooting video is to remember the 180 degree rule. You always want your shutter speed to be double whatever your frame per second that you're recording at. So for instance, I'm filming this video at 30 frames per second, so my shutter speed is one over 60. The reason we do this is because it creates that normal visual effect so that when I wave my hand, it doesn't look choppy or unrealistic. The last portion of the exposure triangle is aperture. If you're looking at your camera settings, that is the F number, the F stop. So usually the lower the number, the wider the aperture and the higher the number, the smaller the aperture. If you're shooting at F 1.8 or 2.8, that is a wide aperture. So the iris of the lens is open very wide. It's letting in a lot of light. That is what causes the blurry backgrounds that people are striving to get either in photo or video. If you're shooting at something like F22, then that is a very small aperture. The hole is very small. There's not a lot of light getting in and you won't see the blurry background. Everything will kind of be in focus. Learning these three elements of lighting can really help elevate your video. As you can see from this very shot, I am more perfectly exposed than my background, and that's okay. The main thing that you wanna light whenever you're filming is your main subject. While I could use something like an ND filter, a neural density filter, which is like sunglasses for your camera, that would help soften some of this, or I could add light or move to a different spot. I chose to not use an ND filter 
leave my ISO at 100, leave my shutter speed at 1 over 60, and adjust my aperture because I don't really care about blurry backgrounds. I care about being exposed properly. Learning discernment and when to adjust which setting can definitely help elevate your videos beyond leaving it in auto mode. If I left this in auto mode and I've done it before, it would try to expose for the background because there's more of the background than just me. And then I would be super dark. The background would be nice, but I would be super dark and that video would not be as pleasing to watch. Learning when to adjust which setting is crucial if you want to get better at the way that your videos look. This is an example of a shot that is completely too backlit. The sun is literally directly behind me and I have stopped my aperture all the way down. My ISO is at 100 and this shot is just not a desirable shot unless you're trying to throw your subject into shadow. So this is an example of that. The bonus setting that I wanted to talk about today is composition. After you understand lighting and the exposure triangle and you can nail exposure or get it pretty close, the next thing you want to pay attention to is definitely your composition. You'll notice for that most of the shots in this video, I am framed directly in the center. I did that on purpose because when I'm talking, I want your eye to focus on me. And most of the time, people's eyes are drawn to the middle of a frame, unless there's something else distracting it. The other thing that I purposefully did today was wear red, a standout color. It's also my favorite color, but it's a standout color, which also helps draw your eye to me. So even if I was off center in the frame, I could help draw your eye to me with what I'm wearing. There must be something going on in this city. The final reason why I decided to center frame myself for this video and for most of my videos is I like to show off the environment of where I am without the use of B-roll when necessary and to give you guys just a little bit of glimpse of what's going on around me. So I shoot wide and then you can see that I'm sitting in the middle of downtown Denver. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these are all principles and techniques that can be used no matter if you're filming with a phone, a point and shoot, or a mirrorless camera or DSLR camera. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like these tips, if this brought you value, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I would love to be able to help answer them and be a resource to whoever needs it. If you really enjoyed this video and you like what I have to say, you like what I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And I'm about to go film some other stuff and take some pictures. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.